Today, I'm gonna go over what to charge in the film industry. After having been a colorist and working in the film industry for over 10 years, I would say I've probably answered this question more than any question. So if you wanna know how much you should be charging, whether you're a colorist, an editor, a DP, or really anyone that works in the film industry, keep watching and so let's jump right in. This intro intentionally left blank. My view on this, to put it bluntly, is to charge what you're worth. What I always say is one of the worst, you know, bits of advice that you can get is to work for free, to get your foot in the door, you know, give discounts, do people favors. Now, I will say it is great to do people favors, especially when you're starting, but it's a very fine line between doing all those things and getting taken advantage of. And you know, something I always say, and I think I might've already said it on this channel in some other video, um, and that is that once you are the cheap person, once you give a discount, you will be known as the cheap person and you will always have to give a discount. The big red flags from a client that I always say is that if someone comes to you and says, oh, give me a discount on this and I'm gonna send you more work or I'll pay you full price on the next one, that absolutely maybe happens 1% of the time, if not less. I think in my career, I think I've known that to happen maybe, maybe once, but I might just be, you know, imagining that. So here's how you find out how much you charge, okay? It varies greatly because what they charge in New York City is very different than what they charge in LA or Austin or, you know, North Carolina or wherever you might live. So my first bit of advice is to, you know, one, learn if there is a market for what you're doing in your city. And if not, find a city that has that market um, and find out how much others are charging for that. And then you want to charge based off of that and also based off of your skills. And then two, as you go along in your career, remember that you always want to add roughly 5% you know, of a raise, give yourself a raise every year. So if you charge $100 an hour this year, next year you have more experience, so charge 105 hours and kind of move up based off of that. Something that I'm guilty of doing is you get busy, you start working, and then before you know it, a few years have gone by and you're still charging similar rates. And then you start noticing that you're, you know, booking every job. But you know, another thing is that if you book every job that comes to you, then that probably means you're charging way too little. That can sometimes lead to being overworked and underpaid. So you always wanna be in a situation where, you know, some clients do walk away because that means that you're charging a, you know, good healthy rate that you are worth. And that's what it's always about. Remember to charge what you are worth. Remember that you have a specialty and just, and you have special training. You know, you know things and you know how to do things that other people don't. And so just the way people don't go to a doctor or somewhere like that and ask for a discount, then you really should not be giving these heavy discounts that I still see people giving all the time. You know, 50% discounts, working for free, or they have, you know, endless amounts of rounds of notes, they have endless amounts of edits. There should always be a price and that price should be connected to work and that price should be connected to a certain amount of work um, and there should always be terms. Okay, so really I'd say it's that simple, but I wanna give you a couple scenarios that you can kind of work with. Let's say you live in Ohio and let's say the going rate there for, you know, color grading or editing is $100 an hour. A client approaches you, they ask you what your rate is. You never ever, you know, if someone comes and asks you how much for a five minute video, you never wanna just throw out a number. You want more information, you wanna schedule a phone call, a meeting. You know, for example, if someone says, you know, for me, if someone asks me how much for a five minute short film, I say, let me watch the film because I need to watch it. I need to know, you know, how I was shot. I need to see how many scenes there are. I need to see, you know, is there stuff that's overexposed, underexposed, are there visual effects? And then, you know, based on the experience, I know that film, short film is gonna take me 10 hours. So, okay, it's $100 an hour here. So I will say that five minute short film is gonna take me $1,000, okay? Keeping, you know, just keeping it at simple math. And then you always wanna have, you know, a set number or percentage that you do not go below, 
no matter what. It is hard to do. It is gonna, you know, hurt a little bit at the beginning to walk away from projects, but you know, you might say, I'm not gonna go below, you know, a 20% discount or 15% discount. So if that client comes back to you and says, oh, okay, well, our budget is, you know, $900, then okay, that's within that discount range that you set for yourself. So you say, okay, yeah, I can do it for $900, you know, however, you know, you then don't wanna just end it there and get started on the project. You wanna have terms, you wanna have a contract, of course, and you wanna make sure that that client knows, okay, so that is a discount. Um, so I will work on this project. However, for that discount, you know, I can only work on it for 10 hours or nine hours or whatever terms work in your specific scenario. If you're a DP, you might say, you know, I'll work at that rate that's a little bit discounted, but I can't be on set more than 10 hours, you know, something like that. And that's what you wanna do. Now, let's say that client comes back and says, oh, you know, uh, our budget is only $600. Um, can you work with that? We have other stuff coming up and we'll have bigger budgets based off of that. Um, and we can pay you your rate then, but you know, if you can work with us, that would be awesome. It's got this person attached to it and there's this really cool guy working on it. I'm sure a lot of people that are watching this have probably heard someone say something very similar to that. And so in that scenario, what I would say is come back and say, you know, sorry, that's way below my rate. Um, if you know that's all you have, I can do it for $600, but these are my terms, you know, rather than saying I can only work for, you know, 10 hours, say I can only work on it for six hours. Or if you're working on it as a DP, say, you know, you can only have me for, you know, one day you know, whatever that, you know, one day, eight hours on set, and they just have to schedule out their production for that. Some people will walk away at that point, which is fine. Um, and then other people will say, okay, and they'll make things work. Um, and then, you know, what I find happens a lot of the times is you may not hear back from them for a few days, and then they'll come back, and then they will, you know, have that extra amount. They'll say, okay, we, we, we can do 900 or something like that. So, so those are two very basic scenarios that help kind of also answer the question, how much do I charge in the film industry? You know, based on where you are, what you do, but also based on, you know, what their needs are, how much money they um, have, and based on your terms on your limits, you know? You know, that's really what it's about. Okay, and so then the last thing I'll say about this is that, you know, in my experience, Usually the people who approach you and have good budgets, have real budgets, are going to be the easiest to work with because they understand how much work is involved, uh, they understand what normal industry rates are, and they're just much easier to work with on every level. Um, and they, all, they will actually also bring good work, better work, and they'll kind of send you on the track that you want to work on. Clients that are always asking for a discount are typically the hardest to work with. They'll typically be the most demanding um, because they do, you know, want things to be done quickly, very cheaply, and very well, and they tend to be the pickiest. And those are the people you really don't want to work with. Okay, and so then the last thing I want to say about this that's uh, a little sort of related to how much to charge in the film industry is that you always want to um, attract the clients that you want to work with. So what does that mean? That means that if you have a demo reel, if you have a website, if you have you know stuff on an Instagram account for your company or just for all your work, um, always post work that you want to work on. So if you want to get into you know sh very specific you know short form documentary promotional videos for you know um, athletes then post that kind of video. You know, a lot of people take every job they can because they have to, and then they pump out everything they work on onto their website, onto their reel, onto their Instagram. Um, and then without realizing it, they have this reel or this presence online where they kind of do everything and they are showing everything. And the best companies and the best kind of jobs that you wanna have sometimes are, you know, let's say, the ones that work in specific niches. So let's say you wanna do a lot of work with feature length films or music videos. 
they want to see a online presence they want to see a reel that has that work you know on the website so if you want to work with you know athletics if you want to work in the beauty industry then only have that stuff as your online presence because then you will attract that client you'll get good work and then you can get to a point where you post everything you work on everything that looks great um, and it'll be this you know great cycle of getting clients you love work you love whereas the other way around if you post everything you possibly work on whether it's you know a commercial for you know a kitchen appliance a feature length film a short film a music video a pharmaceutical company then when a pharmaceutical company or a feature length filmmaker comes to your website and they see you've done a little bit of everything i think it can tend to you know turn them off and say oh they kind of work on everything i need a feature film dp i need a feature film editor or i need a you know short form you know social media video editor and if you have a little bit of everything they will tend to move on unless they don't have that much experience and then those are the ones that will email you not have much of a budget and have a lot of demands and that's where you go on a different endless cycle of working with clients you don't like working for that charge cheap and they always bring other clients because they say hey this person did it for really cheap and they did a good job and then that's what you don't want to be in so again attract the clients you want to work with know your market rates have your terms have your limits of what you're going to work on but really that is what you want to charge in the film industry so hopefully this is helpful it probably will be especially if you're new um, any questions ask below and again like subscribe and i'll see y'all later